It's the mid 19th century in Yoruba land, and there's a national question as yet unresolved. Would this map have this title or this title? In 1843, a book titled Vocabulary of the Yoruba Language, written by Samuel Crowder, was published in London by the Church Missionary Society. Even though it was not obvious at the time, this was a defining moment for the Yoruba race, for it marked the beginning of the shaping of modern Yoruba identity. How did Ajayi Crowder come about the title for his book? Before 1843, the people who would come to be known as Yoruba didn't refer to themselves by that name. In their homeland, they existed as kingdoms named according to their ancestral and historical connection to Odudua, Ijesha, Ekiti, Oyo, Egba, Ijebu, Owu, Ketu, and so on. Outside their homeland, they existed as a significant and cohesive group in three locations, Sierra Leone, Cuba, and Brazil, where they were known as Aku, Lukumi, and Nago, respectively. Technically, a Yoruba personal language didn't exist before 1843. There were only Jebus, Egbas, Oyos, Ijeshas, Ekitis, and so on. So, how did Crowder come about the title for his book? Well, that's a long story, but let's keep it short. By the 18th century, the Oyo Kingdom had become the dominant kingdom among the descendants of Odudua, with a vast empire. The Oyos had extensive commercial relations with many groups, including the Hausa people. For reasons now lost to history, the Hausa people referred to the Oyo people by a name that has been variously spelled Yaruba, Yariba, Yaruba, Yaraba, and Yoruba. This name was first introduced to the reading public in Europe and along the coast of West Africa through the accounts of British explorers Thomas Bowditch and Hugh Clapperton. Bowditch, whose book, Mission from Cape Coast Castle to Ashanti, was published in 1819 following his visit to the Ashanti Empire, briefly remarked about the Yariba, Ohio, as he spelled Oyo. He included a few words he got from an Oyo informant the numbers 1 to 10. However, it was Clapperton's journal, published in 1829, which first gave extensive details about the Yoruba, his preferred spelling, or a yo, that is Oyo, and thus gave currency to the name among those interested in Africa in the early 19th century. Clapperton spent about six weeks in the Oyo capital in 1826 on his way to Sokoto, and his journal contains some of the most important historical records of the Oyo Empire extant and also includes a vocabulary of the Yoruba tongue in the appendix. One of those who read Clapperton's account soon after it was released was John Rabban, a British CMS missionary in Sierra Leone from 1825 to 1837. Rabban was one of the earliest missionaries in Sierra Leone to devote himself to the study of African languages and he made the language of the Aku his focus. The descendants of Odudua were called the Aku people in Sierra Leone because of their mode of greeting. The Aku people formed the majority of the recaptive population in Sierra Leone, up to two-thirds at a point, and reducing their language to writing was considered a priority by missionaries. This was key in Raban's decision to focus on the Aku language. His choice of the Oyo dialect was certainly influenced by Clapperton's journal. In 1830, the CMS published the results of Raban's studies, a vocabulary of the Oyo or Aku, a dialect of Western Africa. Raban stated in his introduction, quote, It may be interesting to some who take up these pages to be informed that the dialect, of which a brief sketch is here given, is spoken by the inhabitants of a country described by the late Captain Clapperton in the account of his second expedition into the interior of Africa under the name of Eyo or Yoruba. The name by which these people are known in the colony of Sierra Leone is Aku from the term Aku or Eku which they commonly use in their salutations." End quote. In all likelihood, Raban was assisted in his research by Ajayi Crowder 
who was from the Oyo tribe. Rabban had had the honor of baptizing Ajayi Crowder in 1825, giving him the name Samuel Crowder after the vicar of Christ Church, Newgate Street, London. Between 1827 and 1829, Crowder attended the Christian institution at Fora Bay, later Fora Bay College, and was the most outstanding student during his time there. After leaving the school, he began serving with the CMS as a teacher and catechist, and from this period onwards, his reputation as the foremost product of the mission grew. It is almost unthinkable that Rabban wouldn't have tapped into Crowder's knowledge of the Aku language, specifically the Oyo dialect. In 1832, the word Yoruba made its first ever appearance in print. It was in the third volume of Rabban's Aku vocabulary. It was also in a report by Rabban on his studies on the Aku language. How did Rabban arrive at Yoruba? We may never know. Curiously, after this momentary appearance in 1832, the word seems to have disappeared from print altogether until Crowder used it in 1843. It is possible that it was at Crowder's suggestion that Rabban changed Clapperton's Yoruba to Yoruba. It is also possible that it was worked out in discussions with other Oyo natives. Crowder worked on the vocabulary during the 1841 Niger expedition. In his journal of the expedition, published in 1842, he followed convention in referring to the Oyo's he encountered on the trip as Yoruba likely because he was writing for a European audience whose knowledge of the area and people had been shaped by Clapperton and other European explorers. He also used Yaruba when referring to the vocabulary he was compiling. Thus, he recorded in his journal on 12 July 1841, quote, Today, I got through filling up of the blanks in the Yaruba column of the vocabulary and correcting the printed translations, end quote. However, by the time the vocabulary was ready to go to press, he had made the decision to drop Yoruba and use Yoruba, and so he wrote in the introduction, quote, Yoruba or Yoruba is likewise the Hausa pronunciation. Yoruba would be more correct, end quote. Why did Crowder decide upon a name whose origin was foreign to the people? Why not vocabulary of the Aku language or some other name? Again, we may never know. Once Crowder's book was published, it set into motion a process that would eventually bring all of Odudua's descendants under that name. Besides his brief 1832 appearance in an exploratory context, the word had never been used by missionaries or anybody else to refer to the Aku people. But once Crowder's vocabulary was published, the name began to appear in CMS journals missionary correspondence, and official documents, gradually replacing Aku. Crowder couldn't have foreseen the revolutionary impact his action would have on an entire race. His stature in West Africa and Britain had risen astronomically in the years following the 1841 Niger expedition, and his views on Yoruba land were well regarded. Key CMS voices like Henry Venn consistently reinforced his image as the archetype of the modern Yoruba person. Significantly, when the CMS released this map of the country in 1852, it was titled Map of the Yoruba Country. Even more significant was that the CMS plastered Yoruba Nation right at the center of the map. This is perhaps the most significant map in the entire history of the Yoruba people. Essentially, Crowder's idea had won. But there was pushback. Notably, as late as 1854, Sigismund Quell, the CMS's chief linguist in Sierra Leone, was still challenging the name Yoruba as an historical. This excerpt from his groundbreaking Polyglotta Africana gives us some insight into the debate about the appropriateness or otherwise of the name. Quote, the missionaries of the country ought to search after the proper national name of the whole Aku country. For the last few years, they have very erroneously made use of the name Yoruba in reference to the whole nation, supposing that the Yoruban is the most powerful Aku tribe. But this appellation is liable to far greater objections than that of Aku. 
and ought to be forthwith abandoned, for it is in the first place unhistorical, having never been used of the whole Aku nation by anybody, except for the last few years conventionally by the missionaries. Secondly, it involves a twofold use of the word Yoruba, which leads to a confusion of notions, for in one instance, the same word has to be understood of a whole, in another, only of part. And thirdly, the name being thus incorrect can never be received by the different tribes as a name for their whole nation. If you call an Ijebuan or a Yagban a Yoruban, he will always tell you, don't call me by that name, I am not a Yoruban. End quote. In his newspaper, Iwe Iroi, Henry Townsend, the pioneer European missionary among the Egba, made the distinction between the Yoruba and the Egba. This was perhaps in solidarity with the Egbas, with whom he had developed a special relationship. His newspaper, first published in 1859, had the header, Iwe Iroi Fuamara Egba at Yoruba. Robert Campbell, a Jamaican-born science teacher in Philadelphia who made an exploratory visit to Yoruba land in 1860, published an account of the trip in 1861. The title of his published map of the country revealed the ongoing debate about the name. It is called the Aku country and Yoruba only represents the Oyo tribe. Despite the pushback, Crowder's idea steadily gained ground. The process of translating the Bible into Yoruba further reinforced the idea. As book after book was released, all bearing the phrase translated into Yoruba, the name further took root. Notably, it was the translation, pioneered by Crowder and later carried out in collaboration with some Yoruba colleagues and European missionaries, that expedited the working out of the Yoruba orthography. Siding with Crowder's 1843 decision, the international effort that shaped the orthography, beginning in the mid-1840s, and comprising leaders, scholars, and missionaries such as Henry Venn, Ajayi Crowder, Charles Golmer, Carl Lepsius, Samuel Lee, and Adolphus Mann, worked on the language called Yoruba. Overall, it was Crowder who had the greatest influence on the eventual shape of the language. As historian Paul Hare remarked, quote, his choice of a dialect and his selection of idioms and expressions in this dialect, sanctified for the Yoruba reader through his Bible translations and for the linguist through his grammar and dictionary, created standard Yoruba, end quote. As Yoruba literature spread, it was only a matter of time before the name became a settled fact. So, thanks to Ajayi Crowder, we have the Yorubas and not the Akus.